Hey guys, welcome back. Hope you're doing well. Today I'm in Luminar Neo and I'm going to be walking through an edit of a pano that I uh, recently created. And if you weren't aware, Luminar has announced that they have an extension for creating or stitching panos together. And uh, what I've done is I've created a pano and I just want to walk through how I edit that. So I'm not going to be combining and stitching and all that in this video. If you want to see that, you can check out my first look at the pano extension in that video. I'll show you how that works in that video. But in this video, I'm going to be showing you how I walk through an edit of this image. I had some questions about it and had some people request this. And I kind of wanted to do it anyway, because I really like my end result so much. I'm also finding that my workflow and what I do in Luminar is changing and kind of morphing over time. So this is also kind of a look into that process. Um, I've got some notes here, but I'm going to go kind of by feel. This isn't going to be a uh, let me do exactly that and exactly this. I don't have any numbers written down. It's kind of a free flowing, but I want to show you my approach and my thought process and walk through how I do editing the light and the detail and the color grading. Uh, and that's what we're going to do. So here is the photo. The only thing I've done is, of course, uh, I've created the pano, but I've also done some erasing. And now I just want to get into the edit. So I start with develop, which is where I always start. And I like to hit the J key just to activate those blinkies. I like to call them. That's the little red and the blue bits that tell you, you know, hey, this is completely black or this is completely blown out. Uh, in this case, I'm actually going to pull the blacks down. Even though I've got some black, um, I want to create a fairly dramatic and colorful, vibrant image. And for me, that involves having contrast in the image. And so I'm going to pull the blacks down a little bit. I want to take the whites down a tiny bit and the highlights a little bit. And you can see I've kind of recovered that enough. Uh, I think that looks pretty good. I'm going to add a little bit of contrast. And I'm also going to actually, I'm going to hit the J key again just to hide those blinkies. I usually just leave it on in the beginning and then I'll check it again sometimes during my edit. Uh, but I want to drop this temperature. I want to cool this off. Um, I love cities and cities uh, in lower light. And I like to play off that cool uh, tone of blue hour with the warm tones of the light. Hence me making the temperature a little bit cooler overall. I'm going to add a little bit of tint. A little bit of vibrance, but I'm going to do more color work later. And a little bit of sharpening. I've been averaging about a 20 on sharpening. And as you can see, I mean, I've got a better looking photo already. There it is before, and there it is now. And now I'm going to jump into my second tool, which is Super Contrast, which um, I use on every uh, image, really. Every single edit gets Super Contrast. It's always Develop or Develop Raw. If it's a raw file, it's a TIFF in this case, because it's a pano that I stitched together with raw files. Um, and number two is always super contrast. It's just so powerful. And I love playing with the light in my images. And uh, that's how you create kind of a dramatic and impactful image is you massage the light. And I'm going to show you a few ways that I do that in this video. So just keep, uh, you know, stay tuned in here. I'm going to keep playing around. But I think it's looking better already. There it is before. And there it is after. I feel like it's starting to pop. So now I want to jump into Structure AI and play a little bit with the detail. And in this case, I'm going to soften up the water and I'm going to use Mask AI to help me identify that. There it is with water. And you give it a moment and it'll find the water. It does a pretty darn good job here. And uh, I'm quite happy with the results of Mask AI most of the time. Sometimes it needs a little refinement, but that's no different than any tool. And if you look at that, I mean, that's pretty much exactly what I would do with the brush. And so all I've done is kind of soften up that water, but there it is before, and there it is now. So now that I've done that, I'm, I'm feeling pretty good overall about that look. I want to do a little bit more. I'm going to get mystical simply because I like what it does with the shadow and the light. It does create a little bit more of that drama, which I love, but I'm going to slightly lift the shadows, but it creates that kind of softer, kind of romantic lighting kind of feel. So there it is before, and... There it is now with Mystical. I think that works really well for me here. And now that I've done that, I'm going to jump into a couple of tools that I like to use for really color grading my images. The first one is toning, simply because it's incredibly powerful. It allows you, as you can see here, you've got a highlights and a shadows section. You've seen me uh, or heard me talk about this if you've been here before. I'm going to start in highlights, and all I want to do is drag that saturation, uh, saturation to the right, and I'm going to go... You know, decent amount. Actually, probably not that high. I'm going to do 30 because I'm going to use another color tool, so I don't want to overdo it. And that's something I recommend. If you're using multiple color tools, don't push the first one too far because the second one's likely going to put you over the top and make it too saturated. So sometimes i got to pull myself back because I do like my color. I'm leaving hue all, uh, all the way to the left there, which is in the red. 
Uh, and that's just picking up a nice bit of warmth overall, which I like quite a bit. I'm going to look at shadows, and I'm going to drag the saturation to the right, but I'm actually going to take the hue into about 230, 232, and all that does is get it in the blue. I like a little bit of blue in my shadows. Uh, it's just something that kind of works for me, and I'm going to try this at about a 20 or so. Now let's take a look at the uh, color uh, adjustment so far with toning. There it is before, and there it is now. You can see the warm tones are a little bit richer, and again, before and after those blue tones are a little bit richer too. I like that. One of the reasons I use toning so much is because it just gives you that nice separation, the highlights and the shadows, and lets you uh, adjust or apply a color in either one of those. But speaking of color, Color Harmony is kind of the monster master, one color tool to rule them all sort of thing. And it is just, uh, it's just incredible. And I think all I'm gonna do here though is get into color balance. I want to add a little bit more umph to those highlights. So I'm going to take the cyan red towards the red. Notice I'm in highlights. There's a drop down here, and you can select which tonal area you want to kind of play with. But I'm going to go with highlights. I'm going to put a little bit more in there, which is why a moment ago in toning, I backed uh, back down a little bit from what I'd done because I don't want to overdo it and make it crazy, but I definitely want a rich and vibrant overall look. I think I'm getting that, uh, as you can tell because this, uh, this photo is picking up a nice pop of color, I think. So if I look at the before, there it is, and that's with toning, uh, where I enhanced the highlights some already, and now after it's got a little bit more, maybe quite a bit more, actually. In fact, I might pull that down a little bit from 18, maybe make that about 13 or 14. I don't want to overdo it. I do like my color, but uh, of course, everything is seasoned to taste. Any adjustment is really seasoned to taste, but especially with color, I like to advise people do what you like. Uh, you may not like the amount of color that I like. I like to kind of go just about to the edge of it being overly saturated and then pull back a little bit, but just like color. So one more time, color harmony. There it is before, and there it is now. I think that's looking really good. It was a beautiful blue hour morning, kind of twilight, kind of pre-sunrise, and uh, I was quite happy with it. Now, uh, I want to do a few other things to adjust the light. I mentioned earlier that I, I approach it light detail and then color or color grading and i've kind of done those i did some light stuff i did a little bit of detail which is really removing the detail from the water and now i've just done some color but i'm gonna go back to light and that's something i find myself doing a lot light even though it's the first thing i edit it's ne never really the last thing that i edit it's a common thread through an entire edit is really what it comes down to so my preferred tool for doing that is develop and what I want to do is go get a radial gradient because I'm looking at this photo and right over here, this section where this area is lit up, I like it, but it's really bright. So I'm going to darken that a little bit. So I'm going to get a radial uh, mask and I need to invert, of course. And what I want to do is stretch this thing out. And it's going to take me just a moment to get that really where I want it to be, but it's essentially covering up that area. And I want to pull in the feathering a little bit. Uh, I don't need a high feather because I kind of want to keep it pretty contained. Something about like that. And all I'm going to do is drop the exposure. So as you see me doing that, you can see some of the intensity there is coming down. I'm going to put on those highlights a little bit as well. I think the reduction in exposure and highlights is probably enough. Maybe a tiny bit more. But let me show you the before and after. So there it is before. You can see how bright that is. It really grabs the eye. And after a bit more tame. In fact, I might drop the whites a little bit. And the nice thing about using develop for this is that you have all these other tools. So I can play with exposure, highlights, shadows, whites, and blacks, but I've also got color tools. So I could cool it off or warm it up. In fact, I'll just take a look at that. Ooh, I like it a little bit warmer. And if I cool it off, I like that too. I kind of like both, to be honest. Um, I think I'm going to go with a little bit warmer here just because it's just, I don't know, it's kind of fun and it seems a little bit less distracting when it's warmer. It's a little bit less white, and the white is kind of what's grabbing my eye. So I feel like now, if you look at the before and the after, I think we've uh, we've made a big impact there, so I'm pretty happy with that move so far. Now, having done that, I'm going to go back into develop, because what I've got is I feel like I've got a little bit of a triangle here. Uh, that's not the right term. Um, a triangle at the top and then an inverted triangle at the bottom, so kind of a uh, parallelogram, somebody that's good at geometry helped me out here, but I think you know what I'm talking about. It kind of, kind of a diamond shape. I got a diamond there and then I got a diamond that way. And I want to accentuate that a little bit. So I'm going to get develop again and I'm going to get a linear gradient mask. Now, if you want to learn more about masking and how to use it and really get the best results, I'm actually building a, a kind of a mini course around masking. 
that I'll be uh, announcing as soon as it's ready. It's not ready yet. I've been kind of playing with it. I want to make sure I have as much uh, information as I can cram into it as possible. If you want to learn about that, just join my newsletter. I'll be uh, announcing that. By the way, you get a free Luminar ebook and free Luminar presets for joining as well if you're interested. So feel free to check that out at the link down below, which is my website. But I've put a, a, a linear gradient there. And all I want to do is take this exposure down. It's a little bit like adding a vignette, but I'm just kind of fading that light a little bit on that side, which I kind of like. And now that I've done that, I'm going to close it. I'm going to open it again, and I'm going to do the same thing over on this other side because I want to keep it kind of balanced. I want to keep my triangle, diamond, rhomboid, parallelogram, whatever my shape is. Um, I want to keep that kind of intact and going. So I'm going to broaden this uh, feathering area, that gradient itself. I like to keep those pretty wide, uh, especially on a move like this. And uh, maybe something about like that. I highly recommend that you experiment and take your time. And sometimes I got to go back and do it again because unfortunately you can't yet, at least at, at, least at this point, edit a mask once you've applied it. But um, I think I'll be happy with this one. And I'm just pulling that exposure down a little bit. And you kind of see how it's kind of darkening that corner as well. Now, if you find you darken one corner too much compared to the other corner, you can just go into edits, uh, which is essentially your history, and grab the previous use of develop and adjust accordingly. I think that's that's pretty accurate. In fact, it actually might be slightly off. So I'm going to go do exactly what I just said, which is grab this one on the right hand side and pull that down a tiny bit further. Uh, I probably should have paid attention to what the number was. That's 110. And what am I at over here? I'm at 96. Um, I don't think it has to be exact because I don't think they were equally bright, but I want them to look fairly uh, uh, equal, I guess, uh, in the edit. I think they do. You get the point. Um, take your time. Get it right. Adjust as necessary. But really, the point here, the bigger point, was, hey, I want to control the light and I want to kind of control the viewer's journey through the photo. So I feel like I'm doing that. And I feel like I've done a good job with uh, my light management and my color grade. So I'm pretty happy with that. I got a couple other things I like to do. Um, Accent AI is a great tool. You just got to be careful with it. And so I'm going to come in and I'm going to give a little bit of Accent AI to the photo. Uh, you just got to be careful because if you start going too far, as much as I like that, because, hey, I kind of like my colors, that's a bit over the top. So uh, I'll go back to zero and then I'm going to dial that in, you know, maybe about a 15 and I think I will apply that across the entire photo. Let's take a look. There it is before, and there it is after it brightens some of the foreground, which isn't uh, necessarily a bad thing. And, uh, you know, I think that looks pretty good. I will often use Accent AI with a mask to contain it. In this case, I'm going to go global. And I want to check out Sky Enhancer because that'll act as a bit like a polarizer across the sky, which might add a little bit to the overall drama. Yeah, that, see, that kind of kind of like that. I wasn't planning to do that. Didn't even have that uh, as part of my uh, practice. I do practice uh, most of the time before I start recording a video. But um, if you look at the overall, that's before using any of Enhance AI, both Accent AI and Sky Enhancer AI. And that's after. I like it. I, I think that looks pretty cool, actually. So I'm going to go ahead and close that. The only other thing I really had planned here was a vignette. And initially I had a a decent vignette, but with all the light adjustments I did, I kind of added a vignette around the edges with those two uh, linear gradients and then with the Sky Enhancer AI kind of across the top. So I don't know that I would go very much. I think I'd go pretty minor if I use a vignette at all. And I would probably feather just to be ca uh, careful there. And I'd maybe give it a tiny bit of inner light, which really defaults to the center of the photo, which in this case is great because this is pretty much a straight on kind of shot from where I was. There it is before. There it is now. I'm going to pull back that inner light a little bit. I think 10 is probably enough. And um, that's my edit, my friends. That's the full workflow, really focused on light and detail. And for detail, all I did was really just remove uh, detail from the water. I like smooth water. I'll often do that with skies. And I didn't do it this time, but it's, it's a, something I'll commonly do. And I did not add structure to the buildings. But that's something I would probably commonly do. It just didn't really feel like I needed it here. They pop enough, and adding that little extra bit of crunch would make them pop a little bit more. Actually, now that I said that, I think I'll go and do that. But here's the other thing I like to do. Instead of applying it across every one of these buildings, I'll just come in with a brush, and I'll just pick out a couple of little spots where I just want to brush in a little bit of structure 
just to be kind of targeted and specific without feeling like I've got to kind of go in and really get every little bit here. So I'm going to come over and get a little bit on this guy as well. Uh, that's what we call the Jenga building here in Austin. It, it looks like that. Maybe I'll do a little bit here. So I'm probably getting more than I uh, kind of indicated I was going to get. But um, I'll clean it up a little bit. Bottom line is it's a nice little way to add a little bit of crunch. And uh, if you brighten things, make them colorful, and make them crunchy, it's kind of hitting it three times with things that will draw in the viewer's attention. So just be careful. Pay attention to that stuff. I'm at a 30 if I look at the before and the after. I don't even know if you can tell. If I go to 100, let me see what that does. Then let's look before and after. Even at 100, it's not that much. But too much for me, and I don't know that you can even tell in the video. I'll just go back to 30 and leave that. So uh, light, I talked about. I talked about detail, which was negative structure and positive structure. And I talked about color grading, which was really toning as well as uh, color harmony, uh, specifically the color balance section. Now, I also did a little bit with temperature and vibrance in develop, which kind of counts, slightly adjusting uh, colors there, but not a lot. But most of that was really toning and color balance. And then, like I said, with light, I come back and I do it again with radial mass and gradient mass and all these kind of things. Bottom line, I took a photo that looked like that. Uh, you know, not a bad photo. Um, I liked the light conditions. It was just a little boring for me. And I turned it into that, which is very much a colorful image. And in fact, you could come in and say, hey, Jim, it's a little too much, in which case you could just open the color tool and maybe take down the saturation. And that's an overall global edit. And if you wanted to take down the vibrance, do something like that, make it a little bit less impactful or umphy. I don't know what the word is, but um, saturated, I guess, is the word. But still, even having taken that down a little bit, there's the before, just the blended pano with nothing else done, and the after with all the kind of stuff that we talked about. That's my effective workflow for this one, my friends. It was a lot, but it's a lot of fun. I love color grading. I love playing with light and detail and color in, uh, in image edit, and I hope it gives you some ideas about your own edits. Let me know if you have any questions down below. Just leave a comment. Thumbs up if you like this kind of stuff. And I'll see you in the next one, my friends. You guys take care. And until next time, adios.